So it's an exciting day today. Um, just had this delivery. This should be my air source heat pump. A uh, few of you know already which one I've gone for, but this is the Remora i9 heat pump. I'll get it unwrapped and we'll have a we'll have a quick look at it. So I've got it unpacked now. It's the first time I've got to have a, a proper look at one. Um, looks like a nice bit of kit. Um, I quite like the black finish. I think it looks nice and smart. These have got Wi-Fi built in, so you can control it from your phone. Um, I'd say it's it's probably I think it's smaller than I was expecting. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks good. There's the uh, the white cable there. I think is a booster for the Wi-Fi signal. Although I shouldn't need that because I get quite good signal from my house. And then you, you got the power cable as well. Because uh, this is the nine kilowatt one, I think it's maximum input is 1.3 kilowatt so it can run off a, a standard 13 amp plug uh, so this is obviously the fan that blows the air out and the air intake is around the back and then you've got the water outlet and the water inlet down the bottom uh, these are inch and a half bsp thread so i've ordered a couple of uh, unions to connect them to pressure pipe it does come with a couple of fittings for fitting to 50 mil hard pipe and also I think for uh, for if you wanted to use rubber boots but because I want it straight to pressure pipe I've ordered some unions which will hopefully turn up tomorrow but in the meantime I can get it in place uh, so it's gonna sit it's gonna sit on some concrete blocks but just in this gap here so the pump's going to come out through the shed at the bottom here into the back of the heat pump out there and back down that pipe i'll probably cut that pipe down a little bit i will have a bypass on it as well uh, i'll show you that as i put it in hopefully i've got other than those unions which i'm waiting for hopefully i've got all the fittings that i need but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes right well the heat pump's in place and all the pipe works in it's taken a lot of messing about to get this all in with solvent weld. So much easier doing flexi pipe, but hopefully this will be stronger. Um, so comes out of my IBC there, up into the pump. Um, the reason that pumps up in the air like that is because I hadn't tightened up one of these valves properly, and because this is just a threaded joint, not a union, I had to twist it another 45 degrees to get to stop it from leaking but it's fine, it's on there. So, comes out of the pump, straight into a T-piece. This is the bypass. This goes to the inlet of the air source heat pump. Uh, so this will allow me to regulate the flow to there or shut it off if necessary. Comes out of the air source heat pump there. Again, there's another valve there so I can completely isolate the air source heat pump if necessary. Bypass joins back into there, comes to here, and then there's a inch and a half to two inch bush inside that 90, and then that's back into the two inch line that I already had, back to the pond. Now I'm just going to give this an hour to dry, and then I'll turn it on and see what happens. I was running low on solvent weld glue, so I've gone a little bit stingy on some of them. Uh, fingers crossed I don't get any leaks, probably will, but we'll uh, I'll come back to you in a minute when I'm turning it on and we'll find out. Right, so we've had a bit of time to dry. I'm going to open the valves one at a time. Hopefully we get no leaks. Uh, I'll run it for a minute or two on the bypass and then as long as that's working I'll send the water going through the heat pump and turn it on. I'm losing the light a little bit now so if we do have any leaks I'll have to, uh, I'll have to do it tomorrow. Okay, so there, there we go, there's the first leak. Oh good. Uh fun, fun. Right, so I've tightened up that union. Let's give it another go. If that leaks again then I'll have to wait till tomorrow because it's pretty much dark now and it's also raining, so second time lucky. Okay, that's looking better that time uh, let's open the, uh, the valve to the bypass so 
going to be hard to see any leaks now because it's raining. Um, there's nothing obvious. Let's, uh, let's open this up. Okay, so I've definitely got another leak there. That looks like there's a joint that I haven't glued. I think it's just the ball valves not tightened up. Right, let's give that a go. Right, third time lucky. I think it's just ball valves that are leaking, not actual solvent weld joints. Can't see any water peeing out of it this time. Let's try this one. That's water going into the air source heat pump. Oh, and another leak. It's just these ball valves. Right, so I can't get this union to seal. Um, and the problem is there's too much pressure on this pipe here. There's, there's too much unsupported pipe. Um, I'm going to have to get something to prop that up for now until I can work out what to do. Uh, but it looks like it's sealed along the bypass route, so I might have to just run that for now and get the heater running tomorrow. Okay, so I've got all the valves open now, and I think we've not got any more serious leaks. I think the problem is, yeah, it's too much unsupported pipe and it's putting pressure on the joints and it was making them leak. Um, at the moment, I don't know if you can even see that there. It's just wedged up with a bit of wood. Um, that's going to have to be temporary. Uh, I will have to get that sorted. There's, yeah, there's no way it can stay like that at all. Uh, what exactly I'm going to do, I'm not sure. But it all seems to be sealed now. There's no leaks on the uh, solvent weld joints that I can see. Although it's a bit hard to tell because it's been raining. But certainly nothing major anyway. Maybe a tiny little, yeah, there's a tiny little drip from this union here. Let's pinch that up slightly. No, that's not stopping that, is it? It's just one after another. Okay, right, let's have a go at that one. Bloody hell, what an idiot. That joint wasn't even glued. Ugh. I'm going to get it glued and then I think I'll have to just leave it till the morning. Right, so it's the next day now. I um, I actually found another joint that wasn't even glued. Um, this one just in here. It's surprising that the solvent weld joints that weren't glued, were they were dripping but they weren't spewing water out. It was just the ball valves that were really leaking. Um, but I think we're alright now. I can't see anything dripping from anywhere else. Though it's a bit hard to tell because everything's wet. Um, so I'm going to turn the pump back on. All the valves are open so some of the water will go through the heat pump. Some of it will go around the bypass. As long as there's no leaks, I'll then get the heat pump turned on. Right, well there's water running through it now. Can't see any leaks. I think we're good for now anyway. Well, I've got that bit of wood propping it up. I'm gonna go switch the air source heat pump on. Right, so I've just turned it on, saying the water is currently seven point well, seven degrees, 7.1. Uh, it's currently set on 28 degrees. Um, so let's turn that right down. Sorry about the wind noise. Uh, we'll turn that to nine now. There you, go, there you go, you can hear the fans moving. I'll tell you what, you can feel there's a lot of cold air coming out of there. But it's definitely doing something. So it's saying it's 6.97 degrees at the moment. Set it on nine. Uh, we'll let that run for a few hours and see if it brings the temperature up. It certainly feels like it's doing something. That's really cold air is blowing out of there already. Right. Well, the 
fish seem to have noticed that there's some heat coming in. They're all uh, gathered around that inlet, so it must be doing something. Just got the air off at the moment, it's on a timer. But yeah, there must be some warmth coming out of that inlet. They're, uh, yeah, they're all desperate to be where the water's coming out. So the heat pump's been running for about half an hour now. Um, this isn't just the title for the, the heat pump, this is the whole house. Uh, bear in mind the actual pond, just in its normal running, uses about 300 watts. Uh, so that's normally between 450 and 500 watts anyway. Um, so yeah, it, it, the heat pump's using about 400 watts at the moment, which considering it's you know the fans running and it's and it's heating. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I'll keep an eye on it, see whether it goes up and down. <laughs> so I'm currently on one pound forty three today. Um, but again, most of that is just the house running costs. It's only been running for a few minutes. I'm about to go to work for five hours, so I'll uh, I'll have another look at that when I get back. So it's been running about six hours now just got back from work and that total for the this is for the whole house bear in mind has gone up by what's that 89 pence um, I've also had my washing machine on a two-hour cycle as well so that's probably the best part of half of that so realistically it's, it's cost less than 50p to be on all day um, and it's brought the temperatures up by I think 1.3 degrees I've just been out and checked it so I'm pretty happy with that so far. We'll, we'll see how it gets on over the next few days. I just thought I'd show you the Wi-Fi app really quickly. Uh, there's only really a few things you can do on there. So you've got the temperature here, which you can adjust. And it shows that's what it's set at, 12 degrees. And it shows the current temperature there. Although on the app it only shows it to the nearest degree, so it's not always totally accurate. Um, just here, you've got a mode button. I don't know whether you can see that. Smart heating, powerful, silent, and something about cooling as well. Um, I've just left it on smart and I haven't really looked into it any more than that really. Um, I guess if you've got people around you could put it on the silent mode. But, I don't know, it, from standing at the front of the pond watching it, I can't hear it at all to be quite honest. Um, you can turn it on and off with that and then... That button there is to set up a timer if you only want it to come on at certain times. Uh, obviously I just want it to run all the time and really that's all it shows you. It's a little bit disappointing, I was kind of expecting a little bit more. Uh, at least I can check it's running and I can change the temperature without actually going out, going out there but really that's all the information it gives you. Hi well, guys, so it's now Monday morning. Uh, so the heat has been on since Friday morning. I've brought the temperatures up to 12 degrees and as you can see uh, all the fish are a lot more active. They're, uh, they think it's the middle of summer now. I have been feeding them a bit now. Uh, I am keeping a close eye on my water parameters. Uh, yeah, They're all certainly a lot more active now. Now the temperatures are warmed up. So just so I try and show you how loud it is. Um, I don't know whether you can even hear it on this or not, but sort of standing here directly in front of it, you can hear it, but it's not loud at all. Um, but yeah, certainly from standing where I'd normally view the fish from in the pond, you know, from here, that fan's running and you can't hear it at all. Um, doesn't seem to be costing too much at the moment. Um, I reckon it probably costs about between 350 and four pounds to bring it up to temperature. Um, I've got a power meter which I'm putting on today, so I will be keeping an eye on how much it is costing. But yeah, so far, really pleased with it. And as you can see, I've not got proper covers over the pond. They're very thin covers because they're from my old pond and they only cover about two thirds of it. So, you know, if I had proper covers, it'd probably be a bit less than that as well. Um, but yeah, yesterday, the peat pump wasn't on at all for the whole day, so it didn't cost anything at all, but it was quite warm yesterday. Um, 
and then it's, it's just come back on this morning so I managed to get a clip just to show you the sound that it's making uh, so since it's got up to temperature it's maybe been on for an hour tops since then but yeah the fish are, fish are definitely appreciating it anyway thanks for watching the video guys uh, if you could give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe I'll, um, I'll keep you all updated on how I get on with the heat pump I'll let it run for about a week and then hopefully I'll give you an update on how much it's how much it's cost for the last week. Um, if it's not costing too much I might turn it up a little bit more but as you can see the fish are pretty happy to have a little bit of heat in there now. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one.